CTE Truth Series Video 4 The Round Barn. Hal Hool enjoyed sharing his story about the round barn. He shared it with me multiple times. He shared it with others, not just me. Hal shared with me that he came upon a round barn, a round structure, one day when he was out in to a rural area and he was target shooting. So he decided that he would shoot that structure in the center that he could see. And then he took a step, let's say to his left, and he shot the new center. And he took another step, and he shot the new center. He told me that he shot 28 times into that round structure. I never really could, during the time that he was sharing this information with me about the round barn, understand what the implication was for solving uh, center to edge. Hal told me that when he left the field that day, from his experience with the round barn, that he knew he had the critical piece of the puzzle for solving aiming. Now according to Hull, that was in about 1950. Well, his first encounter was in 1940, and then he said his solution to aiming came in about 1950. And that's exactly what he shared with me, a 10-year span of work. So, effectively, what we know is that you can take a step and change the center on this round structure whether it's to the left, back to center, and then to the right. So we can change the center on this round structure by taking a physical step to the right from the original center or to the left from the original center. I had thought about his round barn story for many years, never really understanding it at all. So one day, a few years back, I decided to go out into my community and locate a round structure and actually experience seeing a round structure and taking a, establishing a center, taking a step to the left, establishing a new center, stepping back to the original center, and then taking a step to my right and establishing a new center. Well, okay, I went there and I did that. I was not any more enlightened at that, at that moment than, than I was before I trekked out there for my round barn adventure. But at least I'd done it. You know, true knowledge comes from experience. Now think about that. True knowledge comes from experience. Now I can't give you the experience here of going out into a field and looking at a round barn, so I decided to have this model created just for this purpose so that you could get a better look at exactly what I'm talking about. At, at least it offers some kind of a vicarious uh, a look into what occurred with Hal Hool in about the year of 1940. So I, I had my experience. So I hopped into my car. I went home. I walked right into my 10-foot pool room. And there was a cue ball laying on the table like that. Immediately, I thought to myself, that's the round barn. And I realized immediately that 
this cue ball was thousands of times diminished in size compared to the structure that I just looked at and for certain the structure that Hal had described. The first thought that entered into my mind was there's nothing that we could ever do in the game of pool that would require us to take a step laterally, whether it's to the right or to the left, to change the center of the cue ball. And then the light went off. This exercise is visual. Pool is a visual game. Within five minutes of entering back into the house and standing in front of my 10-foot table, I took that cue ball, which actually was a red circle cue ball, and I decided that I would place the cue ball directly between two diamonds. For example, here I'm on the head string. So, and actually that's where I first placed it, was along the head string. So I reached out across the table, one Two and a half diamonds. Two and a half diamonds. As meticulously as possible, placing the cue ball on the head string line with the red circle at the apex of the cue ball. The highest part of the cue ball. In dead line between the two diamonds on the, on the long rails. So, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, I have this diamond, the blue circle, and this diamond in line. Now I'm ready to test out the idea that occurred to me when that light went off in my head. So I stood back and I locked in. I locked in three points of alignment. This diamond to really get me good and started, and then the apex of the cue ball, the blue circle in this case, and the diamond uh, on the other rail. So I made the best effort that I could to put my nose right in the center of this alignment that I'm talking about. And then I shifted my focus to the left side of the cue ball without moving my head. Zero movement in my head. The only thing that can move are my eyes and, my, and, and the focus that they can use as output. So when I looked at the left edge of the cue ball, lo and behold, the red circle could be aligned to the, to the right point of that diamond on that long rail over there. I had changed the center of the cue ball by using my visual focus. There's certainly some movement with my eyeballs and that's fair game, but no movement of the head. So then I shifted my focus back to center cue ball. Now the circle on the top of the cue ball was aligned to the center diamond again. And then I shifted my focus to the right side of the cue ball and the circle was now aligned to the left point on the diamond. How who was crafty. He put all of his clues out there. I would not be here were it not for my trip to see the round structure. And then my return trip to my 10-foot table using the cue ball as the round barn. Now, that was just one step. There's another step that followed. I took a
ball marked at the quarters. And I just set it up as a I set it up as a 15. I'll never forget it. So I stood back, I established my visual. Right edge to C in this case, center to the left tick past the left quarter. And then I shifted my focus to the outside of the cue ball, and there's the shot line for pocketing the ball based on the outermost left edge of the cue ball. I'm thinking, holy moly. So I took that ball and I made it a little thinner so I could test the inside of this. Cue ball. So once again, I set up with right cue ball edge to C, center to SP15, one tick past the left quarter. Then I shifted my, from that very position without moving my head, without moving my body, shifted my focus to the right edge of the cue ball based on the outermost right edge for the inside. And lo and behold, there's the line, the visual relationship, the one tick for center that makes the ball. So then, I set the shot up so that it was a 30. Degree perceptual relationship to that pocket. I already knew right now that I'm home free. So I set up right cue ball edge to B, center to edge, and then I focused on the inside half of the cue ball looking at the outermost edge and there is a shot line that emerged for not only making the ball in the hole but for giving me a slight overcut into the corner pocket. Now what do I call that shot line? I call that shot line a NISL, N-I-S-L. N stands for no, I stands for imagination, S stands for shot, L stands for line. No imagination shot line. There's no imagination to this shot line at all. I just saw the perfect perception and then I shifted my focus to the inside of the cue ball or to the outside which the inside and the outside language that I'm using now is actually a, 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 a synonymous with an inside pivot or an outside pivot. No imagination shot line. No imagination shot lines were truly born on that day that I took a trip to visit a round structure. True knowledge comes from experience. If it had been left up to me to solve this at a keyboard or with a sheet of paper in front of me, pencils, other mathematical type tools, I wouldn't be here and you wouldn't be here. This is a this 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 is a part of the phenomena of center to edge aiming, something that was never supposed to happen. I truly do not think that center to edge aiming would ever have been solved were it not for me taking that trip to the round structure. The clues for solving center to edge aiming were beginning to be, were beginning to spread out and become further apart, harder to put together. But I had all the clues put together. I got a couple of really important clues from from Dave Siegel. Uh, I took every 
thing that I could find concerning Hal and all of our conversations and put it all together. And I, it didn't happen overnight with me. It was more like a 14-year trip with me. But to bring Hal Hull's knowledge to life, to restore the integrity of, of, of what he has done for us, <clears throat> means the world to me. And I know that I will have critics. I've always had critics. But please know this about my critics. They will have never done as much as me. In fact, they will have done a thousand times less than me when it comes to center to edge. But they will try to tell you I'll just put it in a different line. They'll try to shoo you away from my work and from my teachings, what I've uncovered, what I've refined, and essentially away from what Hal gave to us as a gift. Now, one last thing before we wrap this up. I want to assign a name to what occurs for the action, for the visual action, so I've got a, I've got a 15 degree perception here that's to the outside. So I've got right edge to C. My sight line is uh, center to edge, one tick past the left object ball quarter line. Now I'm going to step the outside of the cue ball. so that I can see the shot line, change the center. I'm actually changing the center, just as if I took a physical step at the round barn. I did it all with using my eyes. Now, when I, when I change the center from the sight line, from the sight line to the no imagination shot line, we're going to call that visual action stepping the cue ball. I want to give it that name because I think it's appropriate. We're stepping the cue ball not with our physical legs, but we're stepping the cue ball with our vision. In honor of the steps that Hal took at the round barn, stepping the cue ball. So this draws us to an end of a very important lesson. And very soon we're going to be getting, and maybe even into the next video, uh, CTE video 5. I'll need to check my notes to be honest with you. But we're, we're ready, we're about ready to get into applying application of this information to shooting some shots for the 15, 30, 45, and 60. Some, some inside alignments, some outside alignments, and we're going to take a look at we're going to take a look at Pro 1, basic CTE, and disguise pivoting. So there's some there's some fun times ahead. And once again, I truly appreciate your interest in my work. And if you like what I'm doing, uh, I would love some public support. Thank you very much.